Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given this feedback amplifier. And for the given feedback amplifier, from the given options, which one is the correct one? So here, basically we need to find the stability condition for the given feedback amplifier. So let us see that. So if you see over here, then first of all, this input is applied to the low pass filter. And then, it is given to this amplifier circuit. So as you can see, this amplifier circuit is inverting the input signal. Moreover, here nothing has been specified for the amplifier. So we can assume that the open loop gain of this amplifier is independent of the frequency. That means irrespective of the frequency, the open loop gain of this amplifier will remain constant. So apart from this low pass filter, if you see on the output side, then we have this register and in the feedback we have this register R2. So here to check the stability we need to find the expression of the V out divided by V in and from this we can easily find the condition for the stability. So without going into the expression if you just see the intuitively then on the input side we have the low pass filter that means here this low pass filter will add the one pole. Moreover here the open loop gain of the amplifier is independent of the frequency. And similarly, this feedback network is also consist of only register. That means here, this feedback network beta is also independent of the frequency. So we can say that the overall response of this feedback amplifier will be of the response of the low pass filter. And therefore, it will be inherently stable. But here, still for the sake of completeness, let us derive the expression for the V out divided by V in. So if you observe over here, then this resistor R2 is connected in the feedback. So using the Miller's theorem, we can represent this feedback resistor both on the input and the output side. So on the input side, if you see the equivalent resistance, then it can be given by the following expression. That means on the input side, this resistor will be equal to R2 divided by 1 minus G where the G is the open loop gain of this amplifier. So in this case, the resistance on the input side will be equal to R2 divided by this 1 plus A. So let's say that is equal to Rx. Similarly on the output side, the resistance R0 can be given as G times R2 divided by G minus 1, where the G is the open loop gain of the amplifier. So in this case, it will be equal to minus A times R2 divided by minus a minus 1 or in other words that is equal to a times r2 divided by a plus 1. So let's say that is equal to ry. That means using the Miller's theorem this feedback resistor r2 can be represented as the ri and the r0 and equivalently that is equal to rx on the input side and the ry on the output side. So based on this now let us find the expression of the v out divided by v in. So here, this will be the output voltage V out, while this is the input voltage. And let's say the voltage at this node is equal to Vx. So we can say that here this V out divided by V in is equal to V out divided by Vx times Vx divided by V in. So here as you can see, this V out divided by Vx is equal to minus A. So here, basically we need to find this Vx divided by Vi. And for that, first of all, let us find the equivalent resistance of this parallel combination. Let's say that is equal to Zp. So here, this Zp is equal to 1 divided by j omega c, that is the reactance of this capacitor times Rx divided by this 1 divided by j omega c plus Rx. So basically, that is the parallel combination of these two components. Or we can say that that is equal to this Rx divided by this 1 plus g omega c times Rx. So that is the value of the Zp. So here this voltage Vx is equal to Zp divided by this Zp plus R1 times Vi. So now if we put the value of the Zp then further we can write it as this Rx divided by this 1 plus g omega c times rx divided by this rx divided by 1 plus 
g omega c times r x plus r1 and if we further simplify it then we can write it as this vx divided by vi that is equal to this rx divided by this rx plus r1 plus g omega c times this rx times r1 so here if we divide both numerator and the denominator by this rx plus r1 then we can write it as this rx divided by this rx plus r1 and in the denominator this 1 plus this g omega c times rx times r1 divided by this rx plus r1 so let's say this rx divided by this rx plus r1 is equal to k so further we can write this expression as this vx divided by vi that is equal to k divided by this 1 plus g omega c times k times r1 and we know that this v out divided by vi is equal to v out divided by vx times vx divided by vi so we can say that that is equal to minus a times this k divided by 1 plus g omega c times k times r1 so in this way we got the expression of the v out divided by vi so if you see over here then this a is constant and similarly this k is also constant and as we have seen the value of the k is equal to rx divided by this rx plus r1 where this rx is equal to r2 divided by 1 plus a and further if we write this expression in the s domain then that is equal to minus a times k divided by 1 plus this s times c times k times r1 so as you can see the response of this feedback amplifier is the single pole response and therefore irrespective of the value of the c and r this feedback amplifier will be inherently stable so from this we can say that for the given question this a is the correct answer so similarly now let us see the next question so in this question also we have been given the feedback amplifier and here we have been given that the open loop transfer function of this amplifier has a two poles in the left half of the s plane and in this amplifier there is a resistive negative feedback so for this amplifier from the given options which one is the correct one so once again this question is related to the stability of the feedback amplifier so here we have been given that this open loop transfer function has a two poles in the left half of the s plane and in the feedback amplifier we have a resistive negative feedback that means here in this feedback amplifier this feedback block is the resistive block that means here this feedback network is independent of the frequency and here the open loop gain of this amplifier has a two poles on the left half of the s plane that means here if we see the expression of the a beta then it will look something like this so here as you can see these two poles are on the left half of the s plane and on the s plane if we see then it will look something like this so in the recent video we have already seen that when the feedback amplifier has a two pole response then how the response will look like so here this is the body plot of the feedback amplifier which has a two pole response and we have seen that in this type of system the phase reaches the 180 degree at the infinite frequency that means although at the very high frequency the phase will be very close to 180 degree but still it will not be equal to 180 degree so we can say that at the high frequencies if the a beta is much greater than 1 then in that case this type of feedback amplifiers will be on the verge of instability but here since the phase will not reach to the minus 180 degree so we can say that the issue of the instability will not occur in this feedback amplifier so we already know the condition for the instability right that means whenever the phase is equal to minus 180 degree then at that time if this a beta is greater than 1 in that case the response of the feedback amplifier will be unstable but in this case when the feedback amplifier has this type of response 
then the phase is not reaching the minus 180 degree until the omega is equal to infinite. So we can say that for the all frequencies, the issue of the instability will not occur. And from this we can say that such amplifiers will be stable at the all frequencies. And therefore, for the given question, this B is the correct answer.